Hello friends, it's Tom Swiss here with you once again. And I'd like to talk to you about something different than I, I usually am talking about uh, in these videos. I'm going to talk about making an improvised face mask here in the time of COVID-19. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about this online. Now, of course, an improvised face mask made out of whatever fabric you might have around uh, is not going to be as effective as an N95 mask or probably even as much as a surgical mask. But there is uh, one study out there that's going around where they did a, uh, a, a particulate filtration study. And they found that even just you know putting a t-shirt fabric over your face or a dish towel, something like that, does have a significant filtration impact on uh, particulates, including even down to the size of tiny little viruses. So, you know, you might go and take that, that bandana out of your dresser and you might do the, you know, the style we all know from the, uh, from the cowboy movies there, right? You know, I'm, I'm the bad guy, I'm Jesse James, stick him up, right? Now the problem here is even if I take this bottom part and, and tuck it into my shirt, is here. There's this big gap up here where air is just moving in and out there. And so, you know, if you pick up any any uh, dusk mask, even if it's not an N95 mask, it's going to have a little metal piece here to control the shape. And so I got thinking about this and uh, I have designed a way to improve that, that bandana mask using, let's try that again using a piece of wire. This is a piece of bailing wire about, uh, it's about eight inches long. Uh, you could use, if you don't have something like that, like picture hanging wire, something like that. Uh, you need something that's gonna hold its shape. It doesn't have to be real thick. For an earlier iteration, I took two paper clips and put little hookies on the end there. I don't know if you can see that. I think I just joined them by bending the ends over with a pair of needle nose pliers and hooking them together. So that's another option. Or you could use metal from a wire hanger. This might be a little bit thick, but I think it would still work. Okay. If you do not have wire cutters, you can cut wire like this just by bending it back and forth rapidly at one point until metal fatigue breaks it. So uh, you don't need fancy tools to do this. This is, this is, this is what we call a hack in the business. It's over not a kludge, it is a hack. All right, so we're gonna take this piece of wire and we're gonna take a piece of string, uh, thick string slash thin rope. This just came out of my camping supplies bag, but you, if you have paracord, perfect. That's basically what, you know, about that same thickness there. A shoelace you could use. You could use kitchen twine. I would probably double up the kitchen twine if I was going to use this, but because you want something that's not going to break, obviously. But uh, this, will, this will do. And what we're going to do, we're going to take our piece of metal. We're going to find the middle of the piece of metal. We're going to find the middle of our piece of cord here. We're going to put them together. And we're going to loop our string around the metal. And at the very end, we're going to take that metal and we're just going to bend it over like so. You can use pliers if you have them available. You'll do a neater job. But let's say that you don't. And again, we're just going to wrap this guy around there. All right, what I have now is what is going to be the face piece. This is going to go around my nose. This is going to go under my cheekbones. This is going to go behind my ear there. So I'm going to bend this guy into a form-fitting shape. And let's see, it looks like maybe I want to straighten that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. This is what is going to give this guy shape. Okay, so I'm going to make that fit my face. Now, the thing about a lot of cloth masks out there, the people sewing all these great cloth masks and everything, the thing is, you know, if you wear that same mask day after day, you're breathing in, you're breathing out, you got all the moisture in your breath, 
it kind of makes a, a really great environment if you're a little uh, bacterium, a fungus. This is a great, uh, great environment for that stuff to grow in. So a mask framework that you can put a clean piece of cloth on every day. I think this, this could be a good idea. I'm going to take my bandana and I'm going to make just a triangular fold. Boom. Okay. Now, when we did our, our bandito mask, we put the triangle pointing down. Instead, we are going to put the triangle pointing up and we're going to fold over our face piece. Now what we want, we want the this guy to cover the face piece from the back, like so. Oh, hello. Now isn't that, now it's starting to look like something, right? I tie that string behind me. And what this has given me is this gives me uh, two ties. It gives me four corners and it gives me two ties. So I now have this these two corners of our triangular fold to pull up here and tie on top of my head like so. If this was, if my head was a little bit bigger or this bandana was a little too small, I could tie pieces of string on the ends of these guys to uh, do this, but I think I have just enough space. Here we go to do that. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a few little adjustments here and here. All right, so what I have now looks for hair there. All right, so what I have now is a mask which is tight fitting along the jawline which is fit by my metal nose piece here above uh, at the cheekbones, okay? So it fits pretty well, it fits pretty snug. I'm not gonna get much air going around the corners of this guy. I'm going to be breathing through my two layers of cotton here. And I wore this for about an hour uh, earlier today, just as I was doing some, some late uh, work around the house. And you get used to it pretty quickly. and You can breathe in and out. It's about as burdensome to, to breathe as a good, a good dusk mask uh, is. Of course, again, it's not as effective at filtering as that you know N95 dust mask that I might be using around the house. But by golly, I think this is certainly better than nothing. And if you want it to improve it some more in that fold, you could put a piece of filter paper, um, cut out a piece from a vacuum bag or put uh, some uh, coffee filter in there. And I think you would get a lot of filtration. I, I'm guessing here, okay, this is all, this is all guesswork. We don't have a lot of data about this and you know, use a for real N95 mask by golly, if you can get one. Use it for a real surgical mask if you can get one. This is um, what what we're going to try and do when we don't have those things available. Okay, so here's a the improved improvised bandana face mask. I think all good designs should have a name, so I'm calling this the Bertha. I'm calling this after my grandmother who was a nurse in Baltimore for many years, and uh, I feel like she ought to be honored in some way. So uh, we're going to call this mask the Bertha. Stay safe out there, my friends, and I hope to see you in person when this crisis is done, or we'll see you all online uh, as we're all seeing each other these days. Much love.